The transition timing function provides a way to control the pace of the transition and it describes how the transition proceeds as it is being executed. So the speed of a transition can vary. You may have a transition that starts slow, then speeds up, then ends very slowly. Or maybe you want to have a linear transition. In other words, it will have the same speed throughout the transition. So with CSS timing functions, you have a complete control over the speed of your transition. These functions are set using the transition timing property. You can set it using predefined keywords like is, linear, is in, is out, is in, out, and other functions that we will see in the next videos. But here, let's start off with these keywords. So here I have prepared different boxes that have the same transition property value and the same transition duration value. And when you hover over their container, they will start moving to the right. But here you can notice that they are not having the same speed. Well, that's because we are setting to each one a different timing function. For the first box, the transition timing function is set to ease. And it is the default value if the transition timing function is not set. So basically ease means that the transition will start slow, then speeds up, then ends very slowly. For the second one, the transition timing function is set to linear. So here we have a linear speed. It is the same speed throughout the whole transition. Then the third box, its transition timing function is set to ease in. So it starts slow, then speeds up. For the fourth box, we are setting its transition timing function to ease out. So the transition starts fast, then slows down. And for the last one, it has a value of ease in out, which is similar to ease, faster in the middle with a slow start, but not as slow at the end. Now you can use timing functions to make your transition have a different transition effect.